So in this problem, we're told, calculate FA and FB for the uniform cantilever shown in the figure uh, whose mass is 1,200 kilograms. So I went ahead and drew the figure here. So we have our structure, and we know there's going to be a force FA, FB, and then the center of gravity is going to be right here. We're also given the distance between these two forces, uh, and then we're given the distance to the edge here is 30 meters. Uh, we're also told the mass of this structure here is going to be 1,200 kilograms. So what we're trying to find here is FA and FB. So the way we're going to solve this is by doing two things. Uh, we're going to sum up the torque, and we're also going to sum up the forces. So in order to solve for FA, we're going to sum up the torque. So you know the formula for torque. Torque equals F D times the sine of theta. And so what we're trying to do is sum up the torque. So I know the sum of the torque is going to be uh, equal to zero, right? So sum of the torque equals zero. The reason is, is this thing isn't moving, right? So we know this is at rest here. And uh, yeah, so we know that sum of the torque is going to be equal to zero. So zero equals, and then we're going to sum of the torque. So when this thing rotates, we got to imagine... We got to imagine that it's going to rotate around this point right here. So I know it's going to rotate around this point. The reason that is, is I have a force here that's going to rotate it this way and a force here that's going to rotate it down. So we know we're going to rotate about this point. So when I sum the torque, I'm summing it about this uh, point here. So uh, there's going to be three forces here that we have to find the torque of relative to that point. So uh, the three forces are going to be the torque due to FA uh, and then FB and CG. Another thing to keep in mind, though, when you sum up the torque, if the force causes it to go in a positive direction, or if it uh, causes it to go in a clockwise direction, it's positive. So notice this one will cause it to go this way, which is clockwise, so it's positive. Same with this one. It'll make it go a clockwise right around this point. It'll rotate it clockwise. So this one is also positive. Uh, and then this one is right on it, so it's actually neither, but uh, we can ignore that for now. So we know that we have the torque Fa, Right, that's the torque due to the force A. Uh, and then this one is going to be going in a positive direction. So that's why we have a positive. We're going to add the torque due to the, the weight of this. So this right here is going to be the weight force. So you can call it mg, right? Because we know the force due to gravity or the weight is just mass times gravity. So that's, um, we can call it T, we'll call it T, um, we'll call it TC just for now. So TC. And then... Uh, we also have to add the torque due to the force B, so plus torque force B. So these are our three torques, uh, but keep in mind, let's go ahead and actually just solve for them first. So the torque due to FA about that point, as I said before, torque equals force times distance uh, times the sine of theta. So the force is FA. We don't know what it is, though. We know the distance is the distance to this point. So notice uh, this distance here. The perpendicular distance is 20. So 20. Uh, and the sine of theta, what theta is, it's the angle between the direction the force is being applied to the uh, lever arm. So this is the lever arm, basically the point where it's connected to our um, center of rotation. And then the force is pointing up like this. So we have this and uh, this right here. So the angle between them is a right angle. It's just 90 degrees. So you should know the sine of 90, right, which was our theta, is just 1. So the 1, we can just basically cancel it out. So really, the torque due to FA is just 20 FA. Uh, and then torque due to the uh, our object here, right, is going to be the force, right, the weight force, right, because that, that's our force causing it, mg, uh, multiplied by the distance. So what is the distance from here to here? Well, we know this is going to be at the center, so if this whole thing is 50, right, we know the distance from here to there is 25 meters, right, and we know this distance is 20 meters, so 25 minus 20 is just 5, so this distance is 5 meters, so our distance is 5 there, and so that's the uh, torque due to our uh, structure there, and then we need the torque due to the force B. Now, this is the thing. This is where it actually is interesting. So notice force B is directly on our axis of, or our point of rotation. And if it's right on it, notice force or the distance D is from that point. So if it's right on it, D would be zero, right? Because there's no distance between the force 
and the point of rotation. So if this is zero, this whole value would go zero. So we know that. So that means at this point, the torque due to force B is zero since the distance from point of rotation is zero. So adding this into our formula, we have Fa times 20 plus 5mg plus zero. So basically, if I move this to the other side, minus 5mg equals Fa times 20, and then I would divide by 20, and that'll give us Fa. So uh, we just want to plug in the values now. So minus 5 times the mass of our uh, structure here, which is 1,200. So minus 5 times 1,200 times g, which is 9.8, divided by 20. Right, and so we know our force is going to be Fa equals minus 2940. And so what does the negative indicate? It just means it's opposite to the direction we drew it, or we assumed it was. Right, so the force is actually going to point downwards. So Fa, right, if you leave it on this drawing, it's just negative. Right, so negative 2940. Uh, and then obviously, uh, we're dealing with force here. So we know it's going to be uh, newtons. So Fa is that value. Uh, and then how do we find Fb? We just found Fa. Fb is just going to be found by summing the forces uh, in this structure. So we know it's not going to move. So the sum of the forces in the y have to be um, equal to 0. So we know the sum of the forces equal to 0 since it's not moving. And then our forces are uh, Fa, which is upwards we drew it. So we have Fa upwards, plus Fb, which is also upwards, minus Mg, which is downwards. So your Fb in this case moving these to the other side are um, minus Fa plus Mg. So all we did for this one was just sum the forces in the y. So minus Fa is minus negative 2940, right? Because Fa based on our drawing was negative plus the mass 1200 times 9.8. So let's go ahead and see what this is. 2940 plus 1200 times 9.8. And so when you do this, you'll get Fb is equal to 14700, uh, and then obviously it's going to be newtons. So 1, 000, or 14,700 newtons, that's going to be force B. So this right here is going to be your answer to B. Your answer to A, or your answer for force B is this. Your answer for force A is this. Uh, and yeah, so just a quick rundown of how we did it. We knew the structure is going to be not moving, so basically the sum of the torque and the sum of the forces have to be uh, equal to zero. And since I knew we were rotating about this point, right, I knew we were rotating about this point, so I know Fb, if I sum the torque, it'll go away. So it'll allow me to solve for um, Fa, right, because uh, the torque due to Fb will just be zero, so there's no Fb variable there. So the only one left is just Fa. And then once I have Fa, I can just sum the forces, uh, and then it'll just allow me to solve for Fb, since I have both of the other forces. And yeah, so 14,700 newtons, that's your answer for FB. And then FA is actually going to be pointing downwards uh, and not up. So you could write 2,940 newtons downwards or just leave it how it is and say uh, negative 2,940. Uh, but yeah, so these are going to be your answers here. And hopefully you found this video useful.